Hello guys, welcome to my chan as you can see in the picture today. We will start to part 1, what if Deku got harem with Nijiro Hado. On the 3A classroom, 3 people were talking. The first one was a blonde boy with calic hair. He had a plain face, but a gentle smile. The second one was a black haired boy with an awkward oar. He was trying to hold the conversation with the other two. The third one was a girl with long blue hair that twists around itself at the waist area. Her eyes were in the same blue tone, and she had a happy expression. There are UA's big three the students with more potential. Tagata, when do you think that the UA sports festival for the freshmen will start asked the brunette. She was excited to see more people and their quirks. She is a curious person, and her blunt nature just adds to it. She will often ask invasive or off-beating questions. Her name is Najair Hado first name, second name. Her quirk allows her to send shockwaves through her body, and it's even possible to take down two villains with gigantification quirks. She can also fly with them. Najaira is intrigued by others' quirks and unique physical features, and her curiosity and bluntness increase that exponentially. She is often taken control by the black-haired one. His name is Tamaki Amajiki. He is a socially court person, with low self-confidence and also an inferiority complex. He often thinks that he is not good enough, and needs others to confirm that he did it right. The other one, who Najaira asked a question, is called Mirio Tagata. He is considered the leader of the big three. He is the best candidate for number one hero for the future. Even though he receives a lot of praise, he doesn't let his ideals blind him, and has a hero-like personality. He is a perfect example of a hero. After receiving the question, he looked at Hado. I'm not but I have an idea. Maybe in a week or so, based on our freshman sports festival. Tagata answered the brunette. Okay, thank you she thanked him also thankfully they decided that the senior sports festival will be held later, therefore we can watch the first years I'm so excited I want to see more quirks. She added excitedly. Just don't go overboard Amichiki warned her for he is the one in charge of keeping her from embarrassing more people, he remembered a lot of things that happened between the three. After a couple of minutes, in another classroom, the teacher arrived. He had a pessimistic and grumpy aura around him. He had longish black hair that covered a part of his eyes, and he was wearing a bandage skirt. Sit down everybody. I have an important announcement today. Announced the teacher. His name is Shota Azawa, or Eraserhead is hero name. He is a very gloomy and pessimistic person, and doesn't show affection or anything to the classroom, but actually, cares for them. He doesn't show that directly though wait does it means he is at Sunday or I'll drop this for now. And after his announcement, the class started to speak with themselves, making a ruckus. Shut up he said in a stern voice, making everyone stop to talk instantly I am here to say that we will have the UAS sports festival, and so you will have a free week to train. He said as the classroom started to create a bigger ruckus. The teacher sighed at this and decided to wait a bit. This is going to be a pain he thought to himself. After a week, the entire class prepared themselves. It was now the opening ceremony for the festival. The Kugo, who was the player representative, went to the stage to perform his arm speech. I will win this. I will be first place. The Kugo said it with a straight face and caused the entire classroom to be targeted by the rest. And so, Midnight announced that the first event will be the perilous obstacle race around the stadium. It is just as the name says, they will race to the end. First place wins. Meanwhile, the big three were watching it on the TV that was placed inside the classroom. Everyone was paying attention to everything. When the Kugo said that, the entire class chuckled, except for two people Tamaki and Mirio. Tamaki didn't mind, and Mirio noticed that he was being serious. Najaira was chuckling at that. It was amusing for her. I can't wait to see more quirks she thought to herself excitedly. Calm down Tamaki thought to himself as if he read her mind. After that, the events started. Everyone started running, and when they arrived at the first obstacle, a certain bicolored haired boy made a giant wall of ice, killing a robot, blocking the path and easing his way out. Interesting strategy Mario thought to himself. After that, the rest of the competitors 1A especially started to make the way out of there. There was a huge variety of quirks showing here and there. Everyone was using their quirks except for one person. Why isn't that boy using his quirk? I'm so curious Nichiki thought to herself as she looked to a certain green and black haired boy. He was currently running without his quirk, utilizing solely his own and pure strength. She saw him picking a part of a robot. Is his quirk related to metal she pondered while watching. Her eyes were not leaving him for one moment. Suddenly, another robot approached him, and he slashed that robot at the robot, killing him. The boy was now running towards the objective. He didn't use his quirk, I'm sure why she thought, still looking at the boy. After he ran, slashed some robots and ran, he arrived at the second obstacle the full. That obstacle consisted of a mini canyon with some platforms, and they had to go across it. There were also some ropes here and there. The green-haired boy got a rope, and walked through cautiously, holding for his dear life. His eyes were not filled with fear, but determination. Not even here when is he using it Hato thought to herself, still looking at the boy. For some reason, she forgot the interest on the other participants' quirks, but focused on the boy who hadn't show his. 
She was anxiously waiting to see his quirk. And so, after crossing the canyon, he arrived at the third obstacle the minefield. The boy looked and saw the two leaders were too far away. Still holding the metalpert, he had an idea. Use your freaking quirk the blue net was screaming inside her mind. She noticed that he stopped walking, and saw him caving some bombs carefully with the robot part, as the other participants that passed him glared. What are you doing you can't stop now Najair thought to herself. She was rooting for him. After a minute or so, the boy got a lot of bombs arranged in a pile. Is he doing what I think he is doing Hado asked herself rhetorically. He got the metal part and jumped at the pile. He is said answered the blue net. Boom. Suddenly a huge pink explosion resounded throughout the entire place, as the boy disappeared from where he was. A streak of pink smoke was seen flying, and the boy was quickly catching up to the leaders. I want to see his quirk so badly I mean, it isn't possible for someone quirkless to get in here, is as she thought to herself. Even though she is totally curious about others' quirks and unique physicalities, she had never been so interested in someone's quirk like that, since she saw All Might fight criminals at the news for the first time. After that, he was falling. However, the green-haired boy didn't plan the landing, so he was about to fall fast first into the ground. Time seemed to slow down for him and Najar. The two leaders were surpassing Izuku. It's over for him the blunette thought to herself just before seeing something that she wasn't expecting. The boy, before falling to the ground, with a determined face, picked the metal piece, and slammed it onto the ground, causing an explosion and sending him further away. He was now in first place, running from the others. The bicolored hair decided to use his ice cork and make a platform for him to go quicker. The explosive sand-colored hair boy started using his explosions to follow the green-colored hair. It was too late. When Izuku Midoriya, from the Hero Course president Mick yelled in excitement. After that, the camera zoomed to the winner, and the gyro looked at the boy. He won without using his cork she mumbled as she started to blush a bit. She wasn't aware of that, but Tamaki was. He chuckled softly and quietly. Someone's got a crush, a eh? the black-haired boy thought to himself, grinning slightly as not to call attention to himself. Impressive I didn't see him using his cork once it shows that heroes are more than cork vessels, but instead, they are people with capabilities. Mirio said happily as he saw the winner smile. Yeah. Amnijiki agreed. Najaira was still staring at the boy, with her blush still visible. Earth to Najaira. Hello Tamaki said, snapping her out of her thoughts. The yeah, I, I thought it was pretty interesting she said, blushing slightly from embarrassment. Even though she is blunt and curious, she is still bound to embarrassment. I am interested in that boy Izuku Midoriya. She thought to herself, as she smiled. After the obstacle race ended, the big three were talking to each other. So I thought that the bicolored haired boy could use the ice from the beginning, and avoid losing. Mirio said. Tamaki looked at him. I agree, but the sand colored haired boy could keep those small explosions until the end, and actually win. And Majiki said his opinion on the matter. Najeri, however, had her mind on the green haired boy Izuku Midoriya. I wonder what quirk he has oh crap I didn't pay attention to the others Najiri panicked. And Majiki noticed that she had a desperate face and tried to call her, but to no avail. Najeri come back to us, you're not an astronaut Tamaki said, causing Mirio to chuckle a bit. She snapped out and looked at them embarrassed. Hey she answered, still embarrassed. Amajiki sighed and fascinated. Mirio just kept smiling. As we were saying, what did you think was interesting about the quirks from the first years Amajiki said. Oh the green haired boy, Izuku Midoriya. She answered. I asked about the quirks usually, you make a detailed speech about how cool was that quirk oh, I see someone has a crush, a eh, Tamaki tease her. Well, Tamaki is a socially awkward person, but that is mostly what people he doesn't know. He is close to both of them, but sees Najiki as a big goofy sister. He teases her from time to time, not constantly though. Hado blushed intensely. No she refused, while her red face contrasted her blue hair. Being at Sunday or what a cliche Amajiki tease her more. I am not too was just interested. I mean he didn't use his quirk once. She said, changing the subject and compassing herself. After she said that, Amajiki and Mirio realized that what she said is true. After you mentioned it he didn't Tagata said, placing his hand under his chin. Yeah I wonder why Tamaki agreed. And then, Midnight started to speak. The attention of them turned towards the screen. So the 42 first places in the obstacle race will partake in the next round cavalry battle midnight started, as a leaderboard appeared behind her, showing numbers attached to every place the lowest the place, lower the points that person has, but there is a catch the first place, Izuku Midoriya, will be valued at 10 million midnight set, as Izuku's face changed into a hardcore deadpan. That face Izuku was making is very funny. That face Najaira thought while chuckling a bit. And so, Midnight started to explain the event, and after that, everyone started to make teams. Izuku had a hard time doing so. Mirio and Tamaki started to comment on the groups that were being formed. And that's why I think that it's interesting what do you think Najaira Mirio asked Hado, and she looked at him. I think that Midoriya will have a hard time choosing a team Najaira said, not noticing that she said his name. Midoriya the first place Tagata asked her. 
She noticed that she said his name. The Ayanajir answered, a little embarrassed. I've noticed something you've been focusing on him a lot. Why is that Mirio asked her. She thought for a moment before answering. Well I am not sure, but maybe it is because he doesn't use his cork often she answered him and herself. Najeri is just as clueless as Tagata on this one. After some time, the groups were formed, and Izuku was paired with Tokoyami, Mei, and Yuraka. We will start the event in 10 seconds midnight announces, making everyone focus 10987654321 start she counted it down. And so, the event starts. Most of the groups charged at Izuku's, but they escaped through Mei's hover boots and Yuraka's zero gravity quirk. They flew around the place, running from other groups, and trying to hold the 10 million heat band until the end of the event, which lasts 15 minutes. A lot of teams attacked mid areas, and some even got close, but with Yuraka's quirk and Mei's gadgets, they survived until the half of the event. Izuku's group was running around, dodging. Suddenly, that had been attacked by Mineta's shelter. Minoru's group was basically Shoji guarding him in Sire. Mineta threw one of his sticky orbs, hitting the sole of one of Mei's hover boots, sticking it onto the ground. Crap Midoriya thought to himself while trying to find a way out. He activated his jetpack, sending them flying, but damaging one of the hover boots. The Kugo, however, saw this and launched himself into the air, going for Izuku. Tokoyami defended with Dark Shadow, and the Kugo was caught by Siro. They escaped successfully, and landed on a corner, away from everyone except for Todoroki's group. Shoto made ice walls around Izuku and their group, closing all the ways out. Oh no I can't use the jetpack anymore Izuku thought, while trying to think of ways to keep the 10 million headband. I hope they can get out of that Najire thought to herself, biting her nails out of tension. Hey, Najire Tamaki called his friend. Yeah, she answered. Can you stop biting your nails it's kinda scary this look on your face doesn't help either Amichiki continued, genuinely scared of his friend's face. Her face was serious, looking at the monitor with fierce. When he pointed that out, she noticed what she was doing and stopped. But she answered, stopping what she was doing, when suddenly. The Supraburse scream resounded the whole stadium. Todoroki's team looked like they teleported to the flank of Izuku's team. Something was missing. The headband Izuku loudly said, looking backward in shock. Iida's legs were smoking from the overheat. Nonajire screamed, standing up. She called the attention from her classmates, as they looked at her in confusion. I, I, I just saw a buggy eye, a bug Nijire desperately tried to cover herself, and her classmates looked back at the screen. She sat back in her chair, while Tamaki and Mirio were on the verge of laughing. Nijiri, however, noticed this. She slapped the back of their heads, making them stop chuckling. Ichuiida sneezed. Someone called him something bad somewhere. After that sneeze, Izuku's crew charged towards Todoroki's, using their vulnerability that was caused by the shock that Iida gave them. They shouldn't have changed the order of the headbands when they caught Uru's he theorized mentally, while picking the first headband of Todoroki's neck, and moving far away from them. Yuzu Quirk the gyre was screaming mentally, dying to know what Izuku's quirk is. Midoriya had a happy face, but soon was turned on to desperation. What a shame Midoriya's group didn't catch the 10 million headband President Mick announced as the crowd roared with enthusiasm. I won't give up Izuku thought, determined. So his group charged onto Todoroki's, and his arms started to shine. Red veins started to appear, and small lightning bolts started to cover it. He's using his quirk the gyre screamed from excitement, and the classroom looked at her again. They turned to the monitor again, because they wanted to know what was happening, and the gyre did it too. Mirio and Tamaki were almost laughing, but quickly compassed themselves as to watch the round. Izuku approached Todoroki, and Shoto's arms started to expel flames. The look on his face screamed desperation. He was overwhelmed by Izuku. Midori opened his palm, and fainted a push, only to cover Todoroki's arm, the one that was covered in flames, and swing it sideways, dissipating all of the fire. The SE's Najire was overjoyed by Izuku using his quirk. It was curiosity with an intensity that she never experienced it wasn't only bound to his quirk, but to him as a whole. It still was unknown to her, but every second that passes, she would get more curious on the boy, even though they didn't meet yet. And that move that Izuku performed only made her more curious. It may be the last one that Izuku thought while reaching for Todoroki's neck. Suddenly, he covered his arm with ice and blocked Izuku's charge. The Kugo could be seen using his explosions to fly towards him, and... Time's up President Mick yelled as the event ended. Izuki slammed his head against the ground in a comical way. Izuku was looking down, sad. He wanted to help his teammates to go to the next round, but... Is this all I am capable of he thought I am supposed to be All Might's successor, dammit Izuku thought as tears threatened to fall down. Izuku blocked them though. And then he got a tug from his back and saw Chako looking at him. She pointed at Tokoyami. When you attacked Todoroki Fumikage said, raising a headband with enough points to pass, you let me use an opening so I got it. We got it. Tokoyami said, making Izuku's eyes glisten with tears. He was crying with joy. Thank you was all that Izuku said. Najire was shedding a tear of joy. He sniffed it as she said between sniffles. 
Miryo and Tsumaki looked at her confused. They weren't expecting her to cry. Are you okay Miryo asked Heido. The eye she answered back. Najaya was really intrigued and grew very fond of the green-haired boy. I will talk to him when the festival ends, I want to know more about his quirk she decided. The cavalry battle finished, the winning team was Todoroki's. Midoriya's team passed by a small margin but passed nonetheless. Najaya shed a small tear from joy. She saw Izuku the one she was having a lot of interest lately winning and felt happier from that. Okay now we will have an hour break, and small events while well, it happens yeah President Mick yelled and announced. Najaya processed those words and stood up. Mirio and Tamaki looked at her, and immediately knew what she was planning. Don't think about it he has to prepare himself Mirio's sweat dropped while standing up as well. Yeah, don't. He needs to rest, and a next level curious person won't help Amajiki added, sweat dropping together with Tagata. No, can't wait. Hato said as she just activated a quirk wave motion to fly past them, not leaving a chance for them to catch up to her. A quirk allows her to manipulate and generate shockwaves, it is a powerful and versatile quirk. She can also fly with it if she uses her shockwaves. And so, she was now distant from her classmates, searching for the 1-8 participants lounge. That lounge is an agglomerate of small rooms for each participant, allowing them to have privacy they could make strategies, rest or even leave the room if they wanted. The place was guarded by cameras, but as long as she keeps a small profile, she wouldn't be deemed as a threat. The safety was increased after all. Ejire also knew a lot for Yue's building because of her curiosity. She basically knew every nook and cranny of the school's building, so finding that was easy as breathing for her curious much. After a couple of minutes, she was near the lounge, so she stopped using her court to keep a small profile, and kept walking she eventually arrived there. Crap I don't know his room Hato thought to herself, pondering on what to do oh, I could ask one of his classmates she nodded mentally. She chose the door randomly and walked up to it. Knock knock. The door was knocked, and after some seconds it was opened a girl with pink and messy hair that had antennas, black eyes and yellow pupils opened the door. She looked at Hato and was confused by her presence. Helmina spoke, trying to know what she was doing here. Hi do you know where Izuku Midoriya is located here, Nijaya bluntly asked. Ishido was astounded by her bluntness, and was about to question her, but she took another look at her and her question. She wants to see Midoriya Mina screamed mentally. And a smile crept onto Mina's face. Oh yes. He is at the third door to the right. Mina gave the correct directions. Nijaya thanked her and walked to Midoriya's room. And the ship has sailed I'll have to write some fanfics once this is over. Kufifu for Mina grinned. Hato arrived at Izuku's door. It's now or never wait, why am I so flustered she pondered, but remembered that she had limited time to her friends came to drag her back. After that moment of hesitation, she knocked. Knock knock. After a few seconds, Izuku opened the door, only to see a gorgeous blue haired girl her hair started to twirl around itself at the wisteria. Her deep blue eyes reflecting the green haired boy he was on another planet. Hey Midoriya she said softly. He snapped out of his daydream. The I wait, how do you know my name he started, but was quickly interrupted by her hand covering his mouth. Sorry, but I have to hide from my classmates for a moment whisper only, Kei she whispered. He nodded as she silently uncovered her hand from his mouth. What is your quirk what can it do how did you do that against that bicolored colored hair guy? And her questions kept coming and 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 you get the gist of it, right? Izuku just stared at her and tried to process everything she was questioning to him after some time, two guys appeared. One was blonde and had a cow like the other had messy dark hair and pointy ears. They were running around the place, and after they saw Najaya, they quickly came here. Pants sorry, the dark-haired one said, panting. It seemed like he was running desperately. The blonde bowed after he said that. Izuku just looked at them, confused. For what Izuku questioned them. For her taking your time, the dark-haired one answered, still recovering breath. Izuku just looked at them and chuckled. The three looked at the green-haired boy, confused. No problem, I already did everything I could for the time being, Izuku said after his chuckling stopped. They sighed in relief. Ajiro left 10 minutes ago I have to thank him later. Izuku thought, remembering what Ajiro told him about Hitoshi Shinso. Okay. Now if you don't mind, we will catch our fugitive pet. The blonde said as Izuku and Nijaya sweat dropped by the way, my name is Mirio Tagata, nice to meet you Izuku Midoriya. He said as he extended his hand. My name is Osari, you already know. Midoriya nervously chuckled as he shook his hand. His name is Tamaki Amajiki he's kinda socially awkward when he doesn't know someone. Izuku looked at the referred person and smiled. He extended his hand to Amajiki. I feel you he said, reassuring Tamaki. Tamaki smiled and shook his hand. Hey Amajiki chuckled awkwardly. I am Najaya Hato you can call me Najaya she said, blushing a bit and stuttering. She's stuttering Tamaki and Mario thought at the same time. I think this crush reached a whole new level Tamaki theorized. Wow didn't see that coming Mario commented inside his mind. Izuku saw that blush but shrugged it off. Not possible. Nope. Not with Mideku he denied any delusion of her blushing at him. 
After all of that, they parted ways, and Izuku waited inside the room the gyre was dragged back to her classroom by Mirio and Tamaki. She got an earful after that. Only a minute before the match starts Izuku noted mentally. And so he reviewed everything he planned he knew about that brainwashing effect, and the possible ways of avoiding it, as it was explained by Ichiro before Najira entered the room. The participants Izuku Midoriya from 1A, and Hitashi Shinso from the general department, come to the arena. Your match will start a mechanical voice called them. And so, both of them were about to enter the arena. And now we will start the fight between Izuku Midoriya, from the hero course he got first place in the obstacle race, and showed spectacular use of his surroundings President Mick announced yelling. And the crowd started to cheer. Finally, the next event would start. And welcome Hitashi Shinso, from the general department he wait, how did he pass President Mick announced him but was confused. He didn't remember anything from him. It wasn't President Mick's fault, for Shinso used some sneaky methods with the brainwashing, not calling the attention of anyone also, President Mick was paying more attention to the ones the crowd would be interested the most. Anyway, when the referee Midnight signals, you may start the match yeah he yelled again. Midnight looked at the both of us, and we nodded she then signaled the beginning of the match. Can't wait to see more of his cork I couldn't receive any answers, those two part poopers Nijaya pouted mentally. The two Tamaki and Mario sneezed at the same time and looked back at her. They were glaring at her, and she sweat dropped. Did you say something they both questioned in unison? Ah she was scared. After that, they quickly looked back when President Mick announced the match. Midnight signaled the beginning of the match, Izuka readied his stance, and Shinso looked at him with a smug face. That boy Ajiro. He was an idiot to forfeit after the obstacle race. Gave up too quickly. He shouldn't be here. Shinso said as Izuku grew angrier. What did why Izuku started, only to stop in his tracks? I won. Shinso stated as his smile grew. Everyone started to comment on that, and the huge majority didn't know about Hitashi's quirk. What is that boy saying he won the gyre commented, confused. The arena has mix implanted in strategical places, and the audience could hear it the TV audience specifically. I don't know Tamaki commented. Yeah maybe his quirk has something to do with control because Midoriya suddenly stopped walking. Mirio theorized. Maybe she answered, looking back at the fight. Now walk out of bounds. Hitashi demanded, and Izuku started to walk towards the limit. Izuku was slowly walking towards the limit he looked like he was a zombie by the way he was walking. I can't control Izuku thought, trying to break free from the brainwash. Najaya was watching it, and started to get desperate when she saw Izuku going towards the exit. No don't go she thought. Izuku was still walking, trying to free himself from the brainwashing effect. I have to get out of this Izuku was trying to break free with all of his efforts. Najaya was getting more and more desperate at each step Izuku took. Don't give up don't she thought to herself, her legs trembling slightly. Izuku was still trying, but his mind started to fade slowly. I need Izuku thought, tired. Najaya stood up. You can do it she thought, almost out loud. Izuku was on the verge of unconsciousness, but suddenly eight dark figures appeared at the entrance of the corridor Izuku suddenly woke up, and his one for all activated unconsciously. Two of his fingers started to glow red and expel little sparkling particles. He moved two of his fingers and made a small crater, waking up from the brainwash, and surprising the audience especially Nijar. When he moved two of his fingers and made a crater she exclaimed mentally, but then noticed the burnt at his fingers he broke them, what is the price of that quirk she theorized, but quickly turned her attention back to the screen. Izuka looked back at Shinso with menacing eyes determined eyes. Though you can create this much power with just a flick of your finger I am jealous Shinso provoked. That hit close to home for Izuku he felt the exact same things as him. He remembered to close his mouth and not respond, and he did so. You know I was born with this quirk, and it is unfair. People judging me because I have what they call a villain's quirk. Shinso tried another provocation. That hit home to Izuku again. He wanted to scream I know so badly, but if he did, he'd probably not be able to get out of it. Midoriya started to charge towards Shinso not using his quirk. He wanted to prove the quirks are not everything that matters he wanted to beat Shinso fairly. He deserves it. Well I don't know what it feels to be called a villain, just because of my quirk she started to ponder also, why isn't he using his quirk that Jire thought to herself, and quickly looked at the screen. You are blessed such a marvelous quirk, for a marvelous hero Shinso continued, getting more desperate at each step Izuku took. Again Izuku is indeed blessed. He thought the same things, and agreed totally with them he wanted to scream I am so badly, but he couldn't. And then Izuku took a hold of Shinso's shirt, taking care of his broken finger. Though Izuku hated a thought. Midoriya managed to push Shinso a bit, but he punched Izuku's broken fingers. While Izuku yelled in pain, clutching his broken fingers with his other hand. Shinso took this opportunity, turned Izuku around, and tried to push him out of bounds. No you can do it Nijaya was screaming internally. Midoriya was quick with his reaction and grabbed Hitashi's arm with his broken hand. Uyazuku yelled in pain, but his determination and adrenaline made him continue. Midoriya grabbed his shirt with the other hand, turned around and saved him out of bounds, Shinso hit his back on the ground. 
Hitashi Shino is out of bounds. The victor of this match is Izuka Midoriya, from the Hero Course President Mick announced the winner. Cheers and surprise sounds resounded throughout the arena the green-haired boy won. He successfully freed himself from a brainwash, and without his court beat his opponent. Everyone was surprised. The winner Izuka Midoriya smiles from happiness. He won after all, though he is worried about something. Oh yes Satoshi Shinso. He was Izuka's opponent, and had a similar problem to him. He was judged by what he is, or rather, what he has a quirk capable of brainwashing people. Shinso was often branded as a villain just for having that quirk, something that he was never in control of. Izuku had a similar problem, though he was judged by what he didn't have a quirk. Izuku was one of the 20% the unlucky unblessed ones, but that didn't stop him, no Izuku didn't stop his search for the title of hero he was blessed, but that didn't remove all of the efforts he made, it only gave him a push Izuku won his court by his own effort, not by being born with it he earned it. And for being hit with a similar problem, Izuku felt that he needed to talk to Shinso who was currently frustrated. Shinsusen. Izuku called him. The purple haired boy looked behind him. Yes Satoshi answered, not wanting to hear brag or even an insult he got that a lot. You want to be a hero, right Izuku questioned him. Shinso pondered for a bit, searching words. I do, always did even though I do, people always branded me for a villain, this quirk is really intimidating, isn't it Shinso answered Midoriya and questioned him as well. Izuku looked at him, smiled, and pointed towards the crowd that was now behind him. Shinso was confused but looked nonetheless. He saw some heroes talking about something and looking at him, so he decided to go closer and listen. Hitashi was happy when he heard what they were talking about they were praising him and giving suggestions about how his quirk was so useful, and how Yue is stupid of letting him in the general department. Shinso almost shed tears of happiness but kept it. After suppressing them, his friends started to praise him, and tell him about how he is the star of the general department. Izuku was happy to see this, and after giving them a goodbye, he left the arena. Izuku was really anxious, I mean, he will fight Todoroki. Shoto Todoroki son of Endeavor, and a prodigy of the 1A class, along with Kasuki Bakugo. Who wouldn't be afraid of fighting him, but Izuku has to overcome this fear anxiety, for he wants to be a hero, though something has been bothering him, Todoroki really hates his father for some reason. Midoriya started to ponder, and eventually landed on a conclusion, it is that Shoto is holding a grudge about his left side, so that's why he doesn't use it, Izuku could use this opening and win, but he wants to save him, he wants to save his friend, his comrade. And Izuku started to plan about his match whilst in his room. Ijaya decided to not follow Izuku, she wanted him to focus and win, but her friends were still wary of her. Must pay attention, and be careful. We don't want her to run off to where Midoriya is Amajiki thought. And as if Mirio and Tamaki had telepathy, Mirio nodded. That confused Tamaki for an instant, but he nodded back noticing what it was. And they kept watching the other matches, commenting when one finished, or when something interesting would happen. Even though they were paying attention to those matches, the one that everyone is anxious for, is Midoriya and Todoroki's match. That match is one that everyone is looking forward to. Najaya was really anxious about it, but managed to calm herself for now. After the matches, and sometimes, President Mix started yelly announcing. And now, the match that everyone is looking forward to Prez Mix started to announce it. Izuku Midoriya, the boy who surprised everyone by not using his quirk often he finished Izuku's presentation. And Shoto Todoroki, Endeavor's son, and a prodigy president Mick finished his announcement, and everyone started to cheer. Finally, the match that everyone's been waiting for, will start. Izuku and Todoroki entered the arena, and everyone's cheers went louder. They were now on the polar opposites of the arena, looking at each other their determination overflowing. They were now about to clash. Najaya looked at them, waiting for the announcement for the match to begin she couldn't wait any longer. Her anxiety was consuming her from the inside out. Midnight looked at them both, and asked them if they were ready after confirming it, she looked at the crowd. And now, the match will begin start Midnight announced the beginning, and waved her whip downwards. As soon as she said start, Todoroki unleashed a giant amount of ice towards Izuku it came seeping through the ground, forming spikes. Midoriya. Predicting this, raised his arm, pointing it towards the ice, and flicked his finger, creating a strong gust of wind, enough to break the ice, and sent it back to Shoto. The bicolored haired teen covered his face with his arms, protecting his face against the wind. While groaned Midoriya from pain. The consequence for Midoriya's flick, however, was a broken finger. Najaya, who is watching intently, was agape when she saw the power from a single flick from Izuku, and after seeing the broken finger, she was even more curious. Of course, Hado was worried as well she started to bite her own nails. Amajiki and Tagata noticed this, and sweat dropped they focused on the match right after. They saw Midoriya focusing on Todoroki, searching for any other indication of an attack, that came right after Todoroki sent another one of those humongous waves of ice, and Izuku flicked another of his right hand's five fingers. Another huge wave of wind broke the ice, and sent it back towards Todoroki Najaya was still baffled by that amount of sheer power. It is the same for Mirio and Tamaki. 
Todoroki took more time, though small, to observe Uruzuku. After that, he sent another one of those huge spikes. Midoriya broke his third finger and blocked the ice. His hand was almost done for. Come on you can do it, Midoriya Nijaya thought to herself, biting her nails with more strength. She was truly invested in this fight, as is everyone else. This match is something that a lot if not everyone was waiting for. Pedo was looking and rooting for Izuku, worried for his own being. Never once she saw someone inflict that much of self-damage just by using their quirk, it is something unheard of for her. Now she paid more attention, feeling that things will change from now on. Shoto sent another one of those spikes, and Izuku used his right pinky to flick and broke it. It was a distraction Todoroki created a path when Izuku was about to flick and ran until he was almost above Izuku Shoto jumped at Izuku and punched him. That's what should have happened, but Midoriya dodged it. Todoroki, knowing that Izuku would dodge it, shot a small streak of ice, holding Izuku's leg. Midoriya was about to flick the ice, but I have to use all of it Izuku decided mentally. And so, he activated one for all in his entire left arm, Nijaya saw his arm changing color. So cool she seriously thinks it is cool the way Izuku's arms change color when he is about to use his quirk, which she is trying to figure out, but to no avail. As she was thinking this, Midoriya punched the ice that was holding him down, creating a stronger gust of wind, breaking it. The crowd that was in the direction of Izuku's punch, covered their faces with their arms, protecting themselves from the wind pressure. Nijaya was even more curious to know the extent of Midoriya's quirk, and how much drawback it actually can give. Todoroki, who was the one most affected by the wind pressure, was almost dragged out of bounds, but saved himself with a wall of ice he stands up and looks at Izuku. Midoriya-san. Thank you for letting me show to that old man that I can be someone without using what he gave me. Todoroki said, putting venom when he mentioned his dad. When Izuku heard that, he understood Todoroki hates his dad, and thinks that his left side is a part of his dad, not himself. Midoriya decided to place his classmate above his own safety, and above winning, but he couldn't not be angry. Why because it seems as if Todoroki is looking down at them, looking down at the ones that work at their 100%. Midoriya was also angry because Todoroki was looking at his dad the whole time, not at the fight just as if Izuku didn't exist, or as if he was just a way to show his dad that he doesn't need the power that came from his own lineage. Now let me finish this, once and for all. Todoroki announced, getting on his stance, and launching an even bigger wave of ice towards Izuku, something bigger than what he'd done in this match. While Todoroki finished this match off with one big attack President Mick ecstatically screamed, he doesn't know how to tone down, right? Izuku, who was looking at the ground the entire time, raised his head slightly, and his eyes waved killer intent his eyes were white but serious. He was angry for not being taken seriously. Where are you looking Midoriya said deeply, shutting everyone even President Mick Nijire was taken aback by his tone of voice. In a flash, the huge wall of ice was broken. Nobody saw what happened, until. A broken finger Todoroki pointed out, surprised. You would go that far. Midoriya just held his broken hand and lifted it slightly. Why don't you fight me with all you have Izuku pointed it out, forming a smile with his mouth. You haven't put a single scratch on me yet, you know Izuku continued, looking straight at Todoroki's eyes. Nijaira and everyone was paying attention, and they noticed that it is true he didn't receive one direct attack yet. Midoriya inhaled a lot of air and. Come at me with all you have Midoriya taunted, gaining a dry look from Todoroki. Everyone was having goosebumps, noticing the amount of determination and willpower coming from that teenager's voice. Nijaira was on the edge of her seat, almost standing up she didn't feel this hurt up since she discovered her own quirk. She watched Todoroki get angry. My old man bought you Todoroki angrily stated. No. It's just that you are fighting with 50% of your whole power, while everyone else is giving their all. Izuku started to explain. Todoroki just looked at him, waiting for the rest. A cool hero, that's what I want to be Izuku said, gaining more goosebumps from everyone who is, or is aspiring to be a hero. Something so simple, yet so important. The thing that a lot of people neglect, which is the genuine drive to become a hero. Something that every hero needs, but almost no one has. The green-haired boy has it, the true will to become a hero. And then, Izuku charged towards Todoroki. Imagine the microwave Izuku mumbled to himself while thrusting his right fist into Todoroki's stomach. And to Izuku's surprise, it worked he controlled the amount of output his arm dealt, but. While his broken fingers didn't help, at all. He also didn't control it perfectly, so he felt some pain, though the majority came from his broken fingers. Todoroki was sent backward, though not that much. And that punch started a whole clash of attacks, defenses, and dodges. The spectators were in awe of their abilities, but scared of Izuku's way of fighting. While he was getting destroyed by each and every attack or defense he did, they were scared of his determination and will. How can someone be so willed? How can he feel that much pain and keep going? Why isn't he giving up? Those were some questions asked by some of the spectators, but all of them had an answer already implied since he started this fight. He wants to be a hero, it doesn't matter if he gets crippled, destroyed or anything. 
but that determination deserves praise. It also deserves scolding if he destroys himself. How can he become a hero? Najaya was watching all of that, and was on the edge of her seat, standing up a couple of times. She was really anxious and really worried for Mizuku's injuries. At every punch, every dodge, every groan, she was getting more and more worried she felt the need to watch for him, protect him. The reason is simple he destroys himself so easily. She wants to keep him in line, she wants him to be safe, but she doesn't know why. Maybe I care for him that much Hato starts thinking to herself. She eventually decided that it was like that but something happened and caught everyone's attention. The power is yours Izuku screamed towards Todoroki, making him stop in his tracks. What Najaya thought to herself. Is he trying to save his opponent from something she finished her train of thoughts, putting a hand below her chin. She started to ponder eventually, she landed on a conclusion. Maybe he wants to save him before winning he is Najaya concluded. A true hero. That's the words that were thought by everyone who picked that phrase up they understood. Izuku wanted to save Todoroki before winning before his own safety. An act from a true hero. And then, when no one was expecting it, Todoroki started to spell flames. They knew that Todoroki never used that side was in shock, wondering why that phrase made him activate his flames. And they were surprised of course, Shoto's flames surprised them, but what did it the most was. Why are you smiling Todoroki questioned the smiling Izuku. To help your opponent during a match which one of us is screwing around now. Izuku's face turned into a more serious one, looking straight onto Todoroki's eyes, focusing on the battle. Suddenly Todoroki's father could be seen descending the stairs, spilling egoistical nonsense Shoto shed a single tear, that was quickly evaporated from the heat. But they knew what to do at that moment. Go all out. Yes. They decided it without saying anything they will finish this now, in one strike. Both of them got into stance Todoroki activated both of his sides, giving immeasurable heat and incredible cold. Izuku activated one for all in his legs. They were both giving an immense aura and aura of determination and willpower. Izuku did something today that not many would do he placed someone above himself. And then, Todoroki launched an even bigger streak of ice, being the size of a medium cargo ship, and Izuku dodged it in midair, flying towards Todoroki. The cold air suddenly turned hot Todoroki was expelling a heat wave, heating the whole place up. We have to stop it, midnight the pro hero Cementus yelled and started to make five walls of cement, blocking their clash. His body wouldn't hold midnight answered, trying to use her court to stop them. But to no avail, as Izuku was in midair, and Todoroki was expelling heat in cold waves, dispersing her gas. The walls were made, and Izuku was approaching them. Todoroki was creating a hotter wave, as to make an explosion, but before that. Midoriya thanks. Todoroki said it, and their attacks clashed. A humongous explosion was made, and a huge smoke screen appeared. The five walls of stone were destroyed, making huge boulders fly. The huge pieces of stone almost hit the audience, but some hero helped them not reach the spectators, saving them. What is this it's too strong President Mick yelled, confused. Azawa was genuinely surprised, and everyone was worried. Najair stood up, and expectantly drew nearer the TV, ignoring the others. Before the smoke cleared for them, they heard it. The winner is Shoto Todoroki Midnight announced as the smoke screen vanished, revealing an unconscious boy leaning on a wall. Todoroki was absolutely tired, but could stand up he won. Shoto Todoroki won the match. But Izuku Midoriya won as a hero. Izuku vs Todoroki was and is one of the most anticipated matches that has ever happened in the sports festival, breaking everyone's expectations for the better. The fierce battle of two strong opponents one lost, of course. However, the one that lost didn't really lose. Technically yeah, he lost, but he won. How you may ask. He won as a hero, saving his own opponent at the price of the match. Though he didn't have any intention of losing, he placed Todoroki, his opponent, above the match as a whole for a long time. You may have noticed that he could have used 100% at the first time he punched Todoroki, but he didn't. Izuku Midori held back against Todoroki to actually have an opportunity to talk to him, and even saving him, he was hurt. Really hurt, but most of the damage was his own quick one for affecting his own body, but he endured it all, ignoring his own pain and following his own strive to save. His own ambition. Right after this hurt-fart battle, Izuku was taken to the nursery for a recovery girl to heal him. However, he wouldn't be fully recovered from that, gaining scars. Scars that he got saving people. If Midoriya doesn't stop hurting himself like this, he'll most likely be irreversibly hurt, those were the thoughts of Midnight and Cementus during the battle. One person in particular who watched the battle was rooting for him. She's Najaya Hado, part of the big three, and someone whom Izuku piqued interest in. Her friends and classmates, Mirio Tagata and Tamaki Amajiki, were occasionally looking at her, curious to see her reactions, and to know why she sympathized with this boy on a personal level. Eventually, Izuku got really hurt, and Najaya felt worried in the same scale. Even not knowing the boy on a personal level, she sympathized with him, and from what she saw, he's someone who she can rely on on what though. Hado is someone who doesn't need to rely on someone, being capable of creating shock waves, capable of taking down two villains with gigantification quirks. 
at once. Why then why does she feel like relying on him and what? Those are questions asked by herself to herself, though rhetorical. Questions that she wants to answer, but without any clues on how would she answer them, she'll eventually get them right for now. She only has to worry about the green black haired boy, who got really hurt from saving someone and fighting that same someone at the same time. He'll probably be at the nursery from his injured look, recovery girl would have to take care of him which Iyer concluded from her process of elimination. She placed her left index under her chin and looked slightly up. Her heart was beating with worry, her expression usually calm and serenity was slightly contorted. Eyebrows slightly dropped, and a bitter expression. Worry filled her completely. Deciding that, she stood up from her seat and walked slightly faster towards the nursery, where she'd been so many times before. Training her court took a toll on her body, something that recovery girl witnessed a lot. Tamaki and Mario decided not to interfere this time. After some time of walking, she arrived at the door of the nursery. Something filled her heart, something she isn't used to, for she wasn't in contact with it that much. Embarrassment, that may be the word. It depicts someone who is feeling awkward, self-conscious, embarrassed and so on. It's generally used on things that are close to love, a feeling that really goes together with embarrassment sometimes. Was she feeling embarrassed? Yes, but there's more to it. She would feel more embarrassed if he was alright, but he's being treated or already is, according to her own experiences right now. So, what's this feeling that overpowers embarrassment now? Worry. The worry for Izuku's well-being is something present in her, now in a stronger level. His injuries really made her worried, and that's what she's feeling the most now. That doesn't take embarrassment completely for her. Filling herself with resolve, she knocked on the door, checking if recovery girl was here. Come and said an elder woman, and by the voice, Nijaira could tell it's the old hero. She placed her hand on the doorknob, exhaled a bit, and opened it gently. The first thing that her eyes caught was the white from the walls, machinery and everything else, except for some things. Oh, Nijaira long time no see, a recovery girl greeted Nijaira, waving happily. She and Hado developed a mutual friendship over time Nijaira helped recovery girl a lot back then, and recovery girl accompanied her in the long way that was training her quirk, that before looked so weak. Be a good to see you again Nijaira smiled back, bowed and answered. Oh, wait a second. I'll patch this boy here. Reckless as usual, her recovery girl said, walking towards a certain green black haired boy who was sleeping. Hado looked at the boy and saw his soft and gently at determinate expression, admiring his own resolve. In her eyes, she saw him as someone who deserves the title of hero, but... A patch doesn't that require to take one's clothes before she could finish, recovery girl took Izuku's PE uniform off, leaving only the tank top, that was especially tight on that day. She reacted and looked at Izuku's figure. He was surprisingly buffed, possessing a six-pack. Ensign blush. The gyre's face went from beige to neonard, smoke leaving her ears. Her eyes were open wide, mouth agape. The red from her face could be compared to a lamp. She covered her face with her hands and unconsciously used her quirk on herself constantly, making her fly. Hado's heart was beating exponentially quicker, flustered and embarrassed. Recovery girl, who saw that scene, giggled. Youth, a she smiled softly at the scene right after finishing Izuku's patching. Najaira eventually landed, a blush still well visible on her face. She looked at Izuku and bitterly smiled. How can he be someone so reckless? Doesn't he care for his own body too, doesn't he care for his own being? She mentally scolds him, even though he isn't listening even if he was awake, he wouldn't do so. Recovery girl noticed the worried look from Najaira and got somewhat confused. Why does she care so much for that boy I haven't seen them together at all? Maybe I'm wrong whatever. Beep. Beep. The Pahero could hear a beeping sound a sound that reminded her that she had more patients to treat in the other nursery room. The other nursery room is for lesser patients, and as Izuku got badly hurt, he had to recover there. This room was almost nothing more than somewhere better for recovery, as she had a good quirk for that work on her own. The only thing the school could do is buy equipment in case of emergencies, and Midoriya didn't need this, at least not in this case. Nijaira could you keep an eye on him I'll have to take care of some other patients recovery girl last, making Nijaira blush slightly. Okay, RG she said, nodding. Ah, that nickname a nickname made by Hado, and the one she thinks is better than recovery girl's name Chiyusha Zenjir, the hero name as a whole brings back memories. After hearing the okay, Chiyo left the room, and right after she left, Nijaira sat beside Izuku's bed, looking at him. Noticing his features. Plain, but cute. That's the sentence that could define Izuku's appearance. It isn't eye catching, but after you look at him more intently, you see true beauty. Calmness and determination expressions covered in emotion and passion. The boy has it all. Najaira was filled with something she never felt before what is it she couldn't describe it. It's just as if there was something tugging on her chest, something begging her to get close to the boy. Her face was getting hotter, reflecting embarrassment and fluster. Her dark blue eyes reflecting the soft light outside, and mouth curled slightly. However, interrupting her, Izuku's eyes shot open. His expression held worry, just before turning into something sad, yet happy. Yes, Izuku is happy. 
happy for saving his friend, even though he didn't win. Someone's life is way more important than results. After calming down, he noticed someone else in his room. Looking slightly to his left, he saw a girl with blue hair that twisted around itself from the waist forward. Her dark blue eyes were glistening, her mouth was curled up, and her face was slightly red huo. You the girl who visited my room Izuku instantly remarked, his face reflecting surprise. Snapping out of her daydream, she looked at him. At that instant, she was embarrassed, but almost immediately she leaned it and. It was suddenly Pichukuke was so was dangerous she started to bombard him with questions. Her mouth was moving really fast, and she was flailing her arms, and her eyes were filled with stars truly looking like a child. The green black haired boy was really taken aback by her speed of speech, leaning back when she leaned in too much, but managed to answer some of the questions, evading what he needed to, of course. She noticed the evasions, but decided not to pry too much into that. She may be curious, but she knows her limits kind of. And that continued for a bit of time until the door was heard opening. At the door, appeared two people. One was a boy with glasses, his dark blue hair arranged in a neat way he was very strict looking. The other was a girl with a brown bobcat that seemed to defy gravity, her brown eyes reflected cheerfulness and determination. A determination that came after a long time together with Izuku his company changed people for the better. Ichako and Ida didn't recognize the blue haired girl in front of them at first, looking at her and at Izuku constantly. After a long 5 seconds, Ida recognized her. The gyre Hado one of the big three at UA, someone with a quirk seemingly so powerful that's capable of taking down two villains with gigantification quirks at once. Also, an idol at the academy the majority of the boys admired her, wanted to be with her. Wanted her. On top of being powerful and talented, she's gorgeously beautiful. Now, what is she doing here there's nothing apart from Izuku that she could be here for. That's what Aida was trying to figure out for a moment, before realizing the awkward silence present in the room. Oh, hello I'm Tenya Aida. Also, Miyubi Heido Nijiris and Aida politely greeted her, using the opportunity to confirm, also breaking the silence. Just after hearing the name, it clicked for Yuraka she's the idol I've been hearing so much about what is she doing here with Deku though. Hi also, yes I am Heido Nijire, nice to meet you Heido answered, smiling at Aida and Achako, who was now trying to form words. She was just so surprised. Aida bowed at Nijire, making her bow in return. Achako followed suit, making Nijire bow again. Izuku couldn't speak at that time, he was still recovering from the question session oh boy, it takes a heavy toll on the mind, answering that many questions is really tiring. After recovering, he noticed Iida's in Achako's presence, and greeted them. They greeted back. Now, Nijirisen, may I respectfully inquire the reason behind your company with Midori Iida, politely asked Nijiro overdoing it much. The blunette looked at the strict boy. An aversa slightly blush covered her cheeks softly. Iida and Achako didn't notice it. Izuka looked at her, also curious. I was kin to how do I say it worried about him yeah, I saw his self-destructing ability, and I got worried and curious. She answered honestly, looking into Ida's eyes. He noticed no lie in that sentence and smiled softly. Okay but, why I mean, you do not even know each other on a personal level. At least, not that we know. Tanya asked her. She looked up slightly, placing a finger under her chin. Her expression passed the impression that she was thinking really hard. I don't really know she honestly said, looking back at Ida's eyes. Again, he felt no lie. Achako, who was looking at the scene, looked back at Izuku and saw his bandages wait. Deku I assured Yuraka got really embarrassed, turning around. Izuku, who was confused, looked down, only to see his PE shirt gone, while only his tank top was on. His face got really red, and he covered himself with the covers. Luckily for Najire, she was controlling her own reaction well, not letting the blush take over. After he put his PE uniform again, Yuraka paid more attention to Izuku, and wanting to get closer to know more of his situation as a whole, approached the boy, but... Najira used her quirk unconsciously to get her away from Izuku. They were all confused now noticing what happened, Najira was quick to apologize and say that a quirk, unusually, activated on its own. She was forgiven instantly. Quirks are unpredictable, and that won't change. They all knew it. Right after this whole episode, all of them looked at the TV. The sports festivals won v1 battles, the second phase was about to begin. They all decided to wait there and watch the rest of the festival there. At some point, Ida had to participate, so he left. And that's how the festival ended for the green black haired boy, Izuku Midoriya. Things are about to get interesting. While I couldn't properly pay attention to all of the things that happened during the whole sports festival, I wonder why. Najira was pondering to herself, looking back at the tournament and reminiscing what she could pay attention to. But, why didn't she pay attention you may ask? It's simple, yet complicated for her, at least Izuku Midoriya. A boy that called her attention due to the lack of use of his quirk. Though that lack of use called her attention, it wasn't the reason behind her obsession with the green black haired boy. No, what kept her craving for more information was the boy itself. She felt extra prone to follow him, to know him she felt as if she needed to know him more. But well, she doesn't know that herself. 
Currently, she was inside the classroom, having English class. It isn't as if she needed to participate, seeing that she is fluent in both languages, English and Japanese. Being the daughter of an XROA successful one, at that, and now a successful entrepreneur, she had a lot of experience in foreign languages. Her beauty and overall carefree personality, called the attention of the males of the school, granting her the title of idol of the school. Yes, that non-existing thing, in reality, is actually, though rare, real. She's the real deal albeit all of that, Heido is still someone very approachable, and overall communicative. She's the oh so called reachable flower. That still doesn't mean that she hasn't turned down a lot of confessions. Yes, a lot that's Nichire Heido an idol. She's currently daydreaming, looking at the window. Noticing the soft breeze caressing the green leaves of the big three, located directly below the window of the third floor, she sighed. The sun was softly engulfing the students as they either focused or didn't pay attention at all. It was a calm feeling or a prelude to something. That English class where one would feel unusually, yet not at the same time, tired. During that English class, a knock was heard on the door. Soon after, the principal Nedsu came riding, with his usual smirk. Small taps of feet echoing through the 3A classroom, he stood before all of them. Good morning, students though, unfortunately, brief, I'm here to call Mirio Tagata, Tamaki Amichiki, and Najire Hado. The principal said, not staling, cutting to the chase. They obediently stood and followed the principal. Some murmurs and whispers could be heard in the classroom, seeing that the big three were being called simultaneously to the principal's office. The big three an unofficial title, created by the students and currently really popular. It targets three students, in particular, those who were called to Nedzu's office. What differentiates them from the rest of the students is their well-acknowledged skills and overall experience. They are the future of UA. It's no surprise that it would cause a commotion, though small this time, the fact that they were called at the same time by the principal himself. The 1A classroom. A place where the future is beginning to be forged. A place where heroes are being molded. It's where the majority of the new students aiming to be heroes are located at. Currently, they were having math by Azawa, the scruffy homeroom teacher. Amidst all of them, sat a green-black haired boy, taking notes fiercely and concentratedly. His green pair of eyes glistening with determination his expression calm, yet anxious. The tongue stuck out a bit, unconsciously. That boy is called Izuku Midoriya. He's someone who inherited All Might's power, and overall someone that is genuinely and intuitively a hero. He is truly someone worth paying attention to. Surely, that's what he got from Najire, though he doesn't know it yet. His own personality and character, though unspoken, drew Hado's attention, and kept her interested. Suddenly the door knocked, and after Izawa opened the door, entered four people. The principal, together with Najire, Tamaki, and Mirio the big three. Izuku was too focused in his notes to notice the people who entered. He was entirely inside his own world, learning quickly and overall letting his mind take control. By that, Midoriya couldn't hear the big three's introduction, that happened right now. Muttering and whispering were heard throughout the classroom, similar to what happened to 3A just a bit before this. The 1AS students were really excited to know what was happening to them, since the big three was their Midoriya, of course, was too focused in his notes. Najire, after introducing, looked around the classroom and laid eyes on a certain boy with green hair and green eyes. A smile formed on her face, and an unnoticeable reddish hue appeared on her cheeks. Her body couldn't contain the excitement as she just walked quickly towards the boy. Each step resounding louder inside the boy's ears, her hair fluttering against the soft reminisce wind that came from the windows. She was excitedly, yet gracefully walking towards Izuku. The boys around the nerdy student with a few exceptions suddenly stopped and looked at Najire and at Izuku. Repeating the process, trying to understand the situation. Heido halted when she was in front of the boy. Noticing that he wasn't paying attention, she decided to know what he was doing, so she walked behind Izuku. The class was silent throughout this exchange. She looked at Izuku's notes, noticing the neat, yet quick, handwriting. Trilling her eyes, she noticed Izuku's hands, and how they had scars. Remembering the time when she first talked to him, she noticed that he didn't have those before. As if something was controlling her, she unconsciously picked the boy's right hand, startling him, earning gasps and murmurs around them, and looked closely. With her other hand, which was free, she trailed the scar with her finger, leaving a tender and soft feeling from her skin along the lines of the scar. The usually palish white skin of the boy was now scarlet red, trembling and confused. Why is she doing this? The boy stuttered mentally. Najire, noticing what she was doing, quickly but gently let go of his hand, and started fuming through the ears, red as pepper. She just didn't run, because she couldn't. Well, she's in a classroom filled with new people, after all. Kafazawa coughed, breaking the awkwardness, and snapping the principal from his shipping tendencies. They for that, the big three introduced themselves properly, and they explained what was going to happen, which is an inter-class exchange, where the big three will stay in the 1A classroom for a month, as to give tips, tricks, and pointers, seeing that they were more experienced. Izuku heard all of that, though couldn't take his mind off of what happened. He was trying to understand why she did that. 
Maybe my scars are that ugly. Okay, now that the introductions ended, we'll decide where they'll see they can't stand up all the time, right the principal said, grinning as always not until he looked at Nijire, then at Izuku his grin was more scary. The principal, without saying anything, walked towards Siro, who sat beside Izuku during classes. As he walked, Hanta got more confused. Excuse me, Sirison. I think the Nijira would fit here the best, and for that, I ask you to switch seats. Don't worry you'll get another one the principal said, with his smile, which was now really scary. Siro, who got really scared, reluctantly left the seat and stood in front of the class, waiting to get his new seat. Izuku was really confused, but, not wanting to see that smile from the principal again, didn't object. Nijira was just as confused as everyone. After that scene, the murmurs began, only to stop from another cough from Izawa. The big three each got their own seats successfully after that. Nijire sat at Izuku's left, occupying Siro's place. Tamaki sat beside Tokoyami, behind Izuku, in place of Mineta. Mirio sat in front of Izuku, taking the Kugo's place. Let's just say that the last one was quite tense. Overall, Izuku was being sandwiched by the big three, as he sat on the middle seat of the row opposite to the door, being below the window. Just one seat away from the infamous protagonist's seat, now occupied by Mirio. After that, Nezu walked towards the front of the whole classroom, his fur shining with the sun. The scar passing his right eye giving him a mature aura, along with his suit, even though he's pretty small. Now that we have the seats sorted out, I will say only one last thing pay attention to the third years as students, and learn much from them. Also, Nijire, Mirio, and Tamaki pay attention to the first years, you can learn much from them. The principal said, locking eyes with Izuku when saying that last sentence. After that, he bowed slightly and diligently left the room. Before leaving the room though, Netsu flashed a satisfied grin. This year will be rather interesting. Let's see how much Izuku Midoriya can influence the famous big three especially Nijire Hado. Izuku walked towards the classroom, sighing. Why do I need to sit between every member of the big three? He reached the door, hesitating. I'm kind of wary of what may happen. Quickly readjusting his hands on his backpack straps, he inhaled and exhaled deeply, as if removing his worries. Now or never. He opened the door, and the usual chitter-chatter stopped. Everyone looked at him. Izuku felt a huge amount of piercing gazes. From envy to confusion, to curiosity though jealousy came only from Mineta and Kaminari the perv duo. Midoriya gulped. What did I do to deserve this? He ignored the ogling and walked towards his seat, but before anyone could follow Izuku and question him about his friendliness with the big three, the door opened guests who entered. Yes, the reason Izuku is being the target of gossip recently in the 1A classroom the big three Nijire Hado Tamaki and Michiki Mario Tagata. Also known as the prodigies. They walked nonchalantly towards their respective seats coincidentally around Izuku he was isolated from his classmates. So Midoriya. How do you feel your injuries, I mean Mario asked, seriously. Um no serious injuries. Thanks for asking though I mean only this scar, but that's not Imper. Nijire, reacting to what Izuku said about his new scar, leaned towards him in the blink of an eye, unconsciously making her head touch his shoulder while holding his hand again. The softness of her skin was transmitted to his, just like the heat. Soft. Mirio and Tamaki just stared nothing could be said. The classroom was silent, everyone looking at them. Mixed reactions happening again here and there. From confusion to curiosity, to jealousy unexpectedly, the jealousy emanated not only from Mineta and Kaminari. Noticing what she was doing, Nijire blushed intensely, letting go of his hand. So, Amya you shouldn't strain yourself to that point, you regretted one day she changed the subject, trying to escape, and it worked for Izuku, at least. The words that came from her mouth entered his ears, sticking itself into his memory. He looked down for a bit and then smiled. Maybe if I'm not able to give my all when I need to, I wouldn't be able to call myself a hero well, I'm a hero anip, so I can't really call myself that he responded, scratching the back of his head. Right after that, he lifted his hand and closed it. This scar is proof that I'm not good enough. It is my duty as a student to improve but yeah, I'll tone it down when possible. Thanks for the concern though. He continued, making the entire class speechless. What a true hero. Was the thought of almost everyone there. Clap. 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 Two figures entered the classroom. One being their homeroom teacher Shota Azawa, who, albeit the lifeless and scruffy look, actually wore an approving smile. The other one was a small figure, wearing a black vest and red tie above a white shirt. He was a raccoon bear dog you get the point. The principal of UA, who conveniently heard Izuku's motives, along with Azawa. He clapped in approval and wore a smile bigger than Azawa's. Selflessness the true quality of a hero, unfortunately, rare nowadays you, Midoriya, have that. Keep it up, and you'll undoubtedly become a great hero the principal said, now standing in front of the classroom. Good, kiddo you have potential. As always simply said, now wearing his usual poker face. Izuku was taken aback by what he heard from the two pro heroes. I thank you he responded honestly. The entire classroom, save for Bakugo, agreed to their words, albeit internally. 
Now, I don't want to take too much time from you, so I'll just do what I came here to do Izuku Midoriya. I need to talk to you in the principal's office. Nezu said, looking directly at the boy, who now had a confused look. Um, sure the boy answered, now following the principal. Unknowns to him, after he left, Nijaira was still speechless blushing. Well I'm even more curious I want to know more about him. So what you're trying to say is I can help Nijaira Izuku's voice resounded, confused. Exactly. The principal nodded. Izuku got even more confused. But, what could I help her with I mean what do I have, that could help Nijaira a prodigy the boy said, insecure while scratching the back of his head. Nezu sighed. Before anything, just stop bringing yourself down if you say you're low, even if you aren't, you'll become it. Examine yourself and improve. Don't be overconfident or underconfident. Both are bad. The principal corrected Izuku. He stood in silence, digesting the words. Okay thanks for the advice he said, wearing a small smile. Anyway what I'm saying is that Najira is too curious. Keep her curiosity at bay Nezu completed, now leaving Izuku even more confused. The boy looked into the principal's eyes intently. Najira is often distracted by the opponent's quirks, so you could help her with it, I know you have huge knowledge towards other heroes, and a keen eye for details. So maybe you could satisfy her curiosity, and keep her from holding herself back with that obviously, you will receive extra credit. He added, now waiting for the boy's answer. I trust you and your judgment I'll try, okay I can't promise anything though Izuku accepted. Great. Oh, and I don't really need extra credit so maybe can I hold on to that just when I need it Izuku added, feeling somewhat like a cheater. Sure. Now go back to class, you don't want to lose your grades, Dionizu said, chuckling heartedly. Izuku chuckled together. No no thanks again for the advice, though. The green-haired boy said, now standing up. No problem, all for a student I need to be thanking you for doing this favor, Nezu said, nodding. And then, Izuku went back to the classroom. Najair stole a glance at the green-haired boy. Why can't I look away from him? She took notice of his messy, green hair which complemented to his big green eyes. His dork-like appearance, which was true to reality, went well with his serious expression. Placing the tip of his pen in his mouth, he thought of the question that the teacher just scribbled on the board Najair, wasn't paying attention to that though. One thing was noticeable, yet hidden, on his expression his determination. A fire that shone brightly inside of him. His strive to become a hero to become the number one. To become the symbol of peace. Her cheeks turned scarlet and hot. She didn't know what was happening to her. Nothing like that has happened before. But unknowns to her and Izuku, another person looked from another seat in the classroom. Why is she blushing at Izuku I'm supposed to be the closest to him, I won't let her take him from me. Done, done, done. A new rival appeared who may be. The likes are cinnamon roll. What will happen to Nijair? She observed him. His steps were cautious, yet determined. The respiration coming from his soft, yet defined mouth, brought serenity to her heart. His hands were as tender as a mother holding her child, no matter how scarred they were in fact, every time she looked at his hands, her heart sank deep into an ocean of guilt. She felt as if she was the cause to them, even if she didn't have many interactions with him right then, nor that she was the cause. The sun smile on his face brightened up her mood, like a lighthouse to a boat roaming in the dark cold night. That one time he saved Todoroki at the cost of himself knowledge of that came from Todoroki himself, who slipped once, made a revaluation of herself to change. Would I do the same in his situation? No, I wouldn't. But he did. Those were some of the facts and reasons that made the young girl fall in love with the forest green haired boy. Shrugging the recurring thoughts out of her head, she fiddled with the pen in her hand, making it spin like a helicopter. Occasionally stopping, she took quick glances at his general direction, and she always found him looking forward, paying attention to the chalkboard she remembered that re-encounter with him. That ever saw compassionate, tame and flustered face of his didn't change one bit, even after entering Yue. Until then, that is over time she noticed his facial expressions changing, changing from an uncertain and insecure boy to that man. His face was more serious and determined, yet that warmth never disappeared. The young girl could only theorize at how that serious and determined face of his, could be so heartfelt and friendly. Not that she would complain in fact, she thought he became even more handsome. Some could argue saying he was plain, bland or even unremarkable they were right, technically if you actually paid attention to him, you could notice the marks of a hardworking and good person. His expressions were always filled to the brim with honest emotions, it was like water in a bucket, but there was too much water in the bucket, and it ended overflowing. The countless bone-breaking moves he used during the sports festival proved his selfless tendencies, and the scars on his hands only confirmed it further. The girl paid attention to his actions, behavior, reactions, emotions, expressions conversations were also, inevitably, there too. She already practiced and studied the subjects a bunch of her house, so she was prepared to pay attention to him during classes, the only time she was able to see him. But that time was in danger. Nijair Hado, one of the big three the most popular girl at school of third year. Beautiful body, curves, and a bubbly personality, and she is eyeing him. Inside the young girl's heart, a gloomy feeling emerged jealousy. 
Of course, she wouldn't go to great lengths, that being killing or anything like that, in order to get Izuku she just felt genuinely bad and comfortable. The friendly nature of the blue-haired beauty, and especially how close she was getting to Izuku recently, saddened her. All the girl could do was to dread the thought of losing him, she wouldn't at least that's what she planned. Ryan. With the bell piercing the sleepy student's ears, and the commotion of the leaving students, the observer found an opportunity. The big three had an appointment to attend to, and Izuku was right there, in front of her. She placed her foot in front of the other and walked graciously towards the green net. The quick taps of her feet against the rigid, solid floor below her feet, followed her every step. Reaching her goal, she stopped at the circumferential of the chair, right beside Izuku. He noticed her presence, and with a normal face turned his head towards her, a smile crept onto his face as he turned completely into her direction. Hello, Midori the girl said with a honey-sweet voice. It filled his ears with a diligent and caring atmosphere, and he liked that. His mother had a similar atmosphere, though less formal and dignified. Hey Oi Rosu. Somewhere along the outskirts of the city, a green-haired young boy worked on the beach. His muscles screamed for help, throbbing in searing pain. Sweat dripped from his damp hair onto the thick and raspy sand. Surrounding him, a couple of broken fridges, destroyed televisions, car tires, microwaves and so forth were located at. The messy plethora of trash covered the once welcoming beach. It was once used by couples to have a date at, or for a family to have a vacation, but that was years ago before a company decided to throw a relatively small quantity of trash. Over time, people began to trash there too. Once, bubblegum wraps dominated a small area away from the water. One thing leads to another, and then it became a dump. An illegal dump. And Izuku was there training, as all might asked. It was the seventh month of work, and he was already feeling some sort of enhancement. His arms were more rigid, and his legs had more strength. The cognitive function of his brain was also improved, and could be used in the countless situations in which Izuku, or anybody he knew, could be in jeopardy. A hero's job is no easy task after all. While doing his usual workout, a girl stopped by, tears in her eyes and silently crying. The green net noticed her in the corner of his eye, and instantly turned to her direction. His face was filled with worry, even for someone he didn't know. Halting his progress, the boy ran in her direction and looked at her she was a cute raven-haired girl. Her hair wasn't tied and partially covered her face. He could deduce that her age was close to his own, but that didn't matter. Getting close, he slowed down and called her. Hello, I'm black-haired girl he called her attention, only to earn a scared look. He couldn't notice her features, but he did notice her emotions. I'm not here to hurt you, in fact I am Izuku Midoriya he introduced himself, holding his hand in front of her. She gazed at his own pair of emerald eyes and evaluated him. After a couple of seconds of looking at him, she hesitatingly shook his hand. Raven I can't just say my name and surname on the streets my family is rich for crying out loud. Nice to meet you oh yeah he remembered, ignoring the lack of presentation. Do you need any help? You um. Sorry if his personal I was just you know trying to help he lowered his voice at each word, scared. He knew that talking to a stranger like that could be confusing and scary. Before anything else, she evaluated his actions, earning herself a slight, barely enough to be called a blush. Actually she called his attention. I am not useful. Izuku could only cock his head in puzzlement. I mean, my quirk she explained, hands waving in front of her. The boy genuinely felt bad for that statement during his entire life, he was always cast out, ignored, bullied because he didn't have a quirk. Like the bucket overflowing, out of his eyes escaped sorrow the girl noticed it, however. Are you? Sorry um could you show me a quirk he asked her, avoiding the question. Raven noticed it was a touchy subject, and didn't pry any further into it. As an answer to his questions, she shook her head no. Izuku sighed, knowing it would be hard to help he wouldn't give up though. Could you try to explain it, he chose his words more carefully, not expecting anything since he was a stranger to her. The girl placed her hand under her chin and looked down, trying to search for a good way to tell him what her problem was, but why was she talking normally to a stranger like that her own problems were about to be revealed to a stranger? Easing back at him, she noticed his expression a gentle smile. His eyes shielded no lies, honesty overflowing from him. She felt safe talking to him, just as if he was a long-term best friend a close relative, or even a boy. What was she thinking something like that on a first meeting she was just crazy as she thought about something like that maybe all humans are crazy after all. Dissipating her thoughts, she looked at him and explained her situation her weakness and resolve and lack of trust in herself. Surprisingly, he didn't turn a blind eye to her, and said something like, that is up to you to find, or that isn't something I can help you with no. He actually smiled at her and told some experiences to the girl. He gave her advice, tips and things that actually could help he was a person with lack of resolve and ambition for some time too, so he could help her with that. After the whole conversation, Raven held a solemn smile and bowed to him. Thank you was all she said nothing more, nothing less. But those words carried a deep meaning of gratitude to the green net. His mood brightened up, and he got to the beach in order to continue his training. Wait a second, I talked to a girl. 
Momore Vinyo and Rosa shrugged her memories aside. After that, they struck a friendly conversation, hitting topics such as what is the most powerful quirk in class, who from the big three was the strongest, etc. And for a moment, even if brief, Momo fell closer to Izuku. Izuku, almost every day, trained in the morning. He went to the school gym and just did his exercise routine. Even after inheriting one for all, he had to train in order to get in shape and unlock more of the potential of his quirk, the path to becoming a hero, or even, the symbol of peace, wasn't an easy one, and he understood it. That's why he pushed himself more and more every day. In the beginning, he vomited, grunted in pain, had sore muscles for days to follow, and more, but he continued he never gave up, even with his mother's occasional worried questions, or with the concern that some felt towards him. But he had to suffer more than anyone else in order to stand where they were, where he wanted to be. Izuku didn't receive his quirk out of luck, nor when he was born, nor by any quirk marriages he got his quirk by pure gut-wrenching training and effort. And there he was UA Academy, the no point one school for one of heroes, and Japan's most famous institution related to heroes. With a big plethora of professional heroes teaching under the school, and with huge support from the government, UA became the biggest target for those one of heroes. But not just that, he was the disciple of the no point one hero, All Might, and even inherited his quirk, he couldn't ask for more, and even felt like he didn't deserve anything much to the dismay of All Might, that it mentioned to Izuku that he got all of that by his own effort. Shrugging his usual contemplation, Izuku focused back on the punching bag. His hands were callous from his training he was still getting used to this new regime that incorporated boxing and taekwondo, along with some physical endurance exercises. He was by himself at the gym, at 5 o'clock in the morning. That calm solitude was something he enjoyed and often longed for. After long periods dealing with studies, training, and social interactions, he needed that a long time. As an introvert, he was like a battery after interacting for a long time, he would be discharged. Being alone was like charging the battery, and it made him happy. And with the punching bag, he could focus less on the issues, problems, and worries of his school life. With every punch, the bag was pushed away, but the gravity always pulled it back in its place. Izuku took the challenge of winning against the bag. With sheer strength, he punched the sandbag, sending it back again and again. Dad crossed hook uppercut with that simple combination of basic moves he gradually got used to the boxing style, and instinctively began to incorporate it into his hero training. He repeated the moves more and more, his steps began to get faster and a smile plastered across his face. His eyes held no hesitation, only the strive and determination he always had to become a hero. The bag was gradually pushed back more and more, and Izuku's moves only got faster and faster, but even then, he was only a beginner, and they were sloppy. He had no defenses up he only attacked. However, he didn't care about that at that moment it was only him and a bag in a rhythmic dance back and forth, back and forth. The intense waltz of training only got more intense, and the sweat was violently and irregularly trickling down on the floor. He took one step further. The bag began to touch the ceiling that it was connected to, making loud thump noises. His stance was broken completely as he entered his madman state. He punched harder and harder until... Thump. The bag fell, letting its contents fall on the floor, and Izuku felt the joy of winning, but not for long. I should have paid more attention to my stance he thought out loud amidst his gas for air. He got carried away and forgot about his training, defeating the purpose of his whole clash with the bag. Without much air on his lungs, he crouched and placed his hands on his knees, gasping for air. After recovering his oxygen, he lifted himself back up and looked at the mess he made. At that moment he cringed, and felt really worried that he would be punished by destroying school property well, he had to clean it up, at least. But before doing anything he noticed how sweaty he was his shirt was glued onto his back like a leech, and his hair was even messier. Izuku looked around and confirmed that no one was there with him. After that, he grabbed the hem of his shirt with his both hands, and pulled it off he was now shirtless. Izuku wasn't a fan of being shirtless, so much so that he actually covered himself up while changing the boys' changing room. He had never felt comfortable being half-naked in front of anyone, courtesy of his mother's constant worries when he hit puberty. He placed the shirt on his backpack and stretched. Instead of the skin inert that anyone would expect, Izuku had a really toned body. However, it wasn't on purpose or anything like that his training had paid off, not only in skills, but his body also changed. All Might's schedule had transformed the wimpy nerd that Izuku was into a strong toned man. After his stretch, Izuku picked a broom and began to clean the mess he made. Why a really low voice could be heard outside the gym. Nijaira stood there, looking at the shirtless Izuku. Her face was drowned in red, and her ears burned like embers. She could only look at the boy's body. He always gave a nerdy and shy kind of vibe, so the speculation of a bulky Izuku had never even crossed her mind. She was fuzzy and couldn't think properly all she could do was to look. He seemed so strong right then even though she noticed his selfless behavior, his shy demeanor, and his introverted nature, she knew he had some kind of physical strength, but not to that length. Izuku cleaned the floor with care, not wanting to leave a mess. 
most people would leave it to the janitor or just call some kind of authority, but Izuku took initiative in action. That was, however, something that Izuku developed while studying at UA. His fight with Todoroki only enforced that. Najaya admired his actions and kept looking. She clutched her chest tightly, her heart tapped against her chest like an orchestrated band. At that moment, it wasn't Izuku's body, feats or his actions that hooked her. It was something mysterious, inexplicable and invisible. No apparent reason, no real motive. Just like a spider's web, she was entangled with Izuku. Nothing could fully explain that feeling in her heart, the melodical beating in her chest, or the kiss of her face, someone could say what it was, but not justify it. She continued to look at him, and her eyes were focused on one point one sole place that outshined all the others' his eyes. They were beautiful pristine rolled ones. The pair was glimmered in tenderness and care kind of roundish, they were the definition of gentle. His body may have called her attention, but it was only the trigger of things that were already being built up. Since the sports festival, she couldn't take her eyes off of him. His battle with the bicolored hair, Todoroki, worried her to the core. That first encounter with him was engraved inside her heart so on, and so forth. He may have been a freshman, someone less popular, plain looking, full of scars, too self-conscious, and be filled with flaws, but even then, with all of those things that could build a wall between them, he was Izuku that's all she needed. Those things were getting clear to her. She wasn't dumb, slow, nor dense, but she was certainly curious. Of course, she was curious at his quirk, but something new perked up on her something she had never experienced before. She was curious about the smallest things, things that she would never even have paid attention before. What is his favorite color? What is his favorite food? What does he like? Is he a fan of a certain show? And the questions couldn't stop coming through. No one had ever perked so much interest, so much curiosity in her before. She may not have held many conversations with him or known him for much time. She may not have had any kind of backstory with him or anything like that. But she couldn't help it. The gyre continued glancing at him and placed her other hand on top of her heart. In that instant time stopped. It may have happened only for her, but it still happened. In that specific time and place, she was linked, completely infatuated. He wasn't a prince, he wasn't someone rich or someone she knew for much time. But I love him she confirmed it with herself. Finally looking away, she closed her eyes and smiled tenderly. With a stupid reason for seeing his body, the trigger was finally pulled. There wasn't any justification for loving him, but she still did. Their curiosity only grew from that point on. Thanks for watching my video. Support the wordsmith. Fanfic link in the description. Don't forget to like share, subscribe and comment below your favorite part.